Hi everyone, we're really excited to be here today to talk about multimodality in the Corpus and Repository of Writing, or Crow. And I'm Shelley Staples. I'm Yvon Favors. And we're both from the University of Arizona. So today I'm first going to introduce the Corpus and Repository of Writing, or Crow, which is a corpus or collection of first year writing texts. Um, then I'm going to talk a little bit about multimodality in the first year writing corpus that we have. Uh, Jeroen's going to talk us through one multimodal writing assignment that we developed together. And then I'm going to come back and talk about how we're currently coding multimodal writing assignments in the corpus. I'll finish with next steps, um, but we're really hoping to also get your ideas uh, for our project moving forward. So first of all, the corpus and repository of writing. Um, if you're not familiar with this term corpus, it's at its very simplest, um, just means a collection of texts. However, uh, from the perspective of corpus linguistics, we are also concerned with how we are representing a particular domain. So here we are trying to represent um, the domain of first year writing, particularly international student sections to start. Um, at various institutions that participate in this project. So currently, we have the University of Arizona. I also have colleagues from Purdue University that I've been working with and building the corpus with. Um, and then the second part, which is not often paired with a corpus, is a repository. Um, and so these are, uh, this is a repository of pedagogical materials from first year writing classes, things like syllabi and assignment sheets and lesson plans, peer review forms. These are things that we often see separate from the student texts that are shared um, within, you know, first year writing programs um, to help instructors to know what they might be able to develop for their classrooms. So here, this is kind of unique. We're pairing these together um, and eventually we'll be able to look uh, at the specific materials that are aligned with specific um, corpus texts, so that'll be uh, really nice. Um, again, the main two institutions uh, contributing to the corpus right now are University of Arizona and Purdue. I've also got um, some texts from Northern Arizona University, which will eventually go into the Crow corpus. Um, right now, it's offline access that's available for researchers and teachers at the two institutions. So we do workshops um, each semester to introduce teachers in particular to the corpus. I also use this in um, the classes that I teach. So I'm cur currently teaching a corpus linguistics course. We work um, to some extent with the Crow corpus uh, in that course. We are currently developing an online interface as we feel that this will be helpful for especially teachers um, to access and use the corpus and the repository. And so that's in its uh, beta version, um, we'll be introducing that in um, about a week at, uh, and in, at Purdue University. Um, so the traditional texts that we have in the corpus, so these would be assignments like argumentative essays and rhetorical analyses that don't have a lot of multimodality in them, um, they can be converted automatically to plain texts. And we have a process um, for that that's fairly well developed. Um, we add headers with demographic information automatically. Um, and we also actually de-identify information such as the students' names and the instructors' names from the text and also from the pedagogical materials. And then um, just one principle that we use is to use angle brackets for anything that is not um, the student's text or the pedagogical material um, so that we can indicate that um, this is separate from that text. So this is an example of what a text looks like in the corpus. Uh, on the left hand side we have the plain text version that we've converted from the um, regular uh, Word document that the student submitted. Uh, it's been stripped of all the identifying information and we've added the headers. So the student ID here is a unique ID, but it's 
has nothing to do with the actual student's ID. Um, we have other information about the student, such as the year in school, gender, um, the college and program that they're in, and their TOEFL scores. So all of this is collected through registrar data, but is um, consented. Uh, the student consents to have this information collected, and then we de-identify uh, so that there's no record of the student's name in, in relation to this information. Then we also have information about the um, assignment. So here, uh, this assignment, the assignment code is DE. This stands for Description and Explanation. And just a little bit about that assignment, because it relates to one of the multimodal assignments, is that this um, is an um, assignment where the students are asked to rewrite an article that they read, um, and they're asked to use a different genre, or sorry, different register. Um, but it, it doesn't have to be a multimodal register, but it often is. So some students use tweets, for example, um, and we'll see an example of that uh, later on in the presentation. So in this description and explanation, they're actually describing what they did. Um, and so this, this writer um, changed the article into a Facebook post, for example. And then on the right, you can see what this is looking like in our online interface. Right now, we don't have access to full text for various reasons. In the online interface, um, we will have that for certain authenticated users. But you can see that we have um, an excerpt of the text, and we also have all of the demographic information that was um, found in the header is here in um, uh, the online interface. And the online interface allows you to search for, say, key terms that you're looking for. You can also narrow uh, the um, selections down to assignments or uh, narrow it down by the student's country of origin or, or other demographic information. So in addition to these more traditional um, types of assignments. We also have a number of uh, assignments in that build multimodality into the curriculum of first year writing at University of Arizona, including um, the, what I was uh, referring to earlier, these register research rewrites where a writer takes content from a research article and rewrites it in a, another less formal register and um, these can consist of tweets, Facebook posts, um, also presentations, um, but often um, things like emojis are used uh, in these. And so this is a way that the writers are expressing themselves um, without uh, actual text. And the other place that we see a lot of the multimodal modality um, is in portfolio projects and here uh, the writer is reflecting on the learning outcomes of the writing course in which they're in, and they provide examples from their own writing, uh, but they often include images um, to talk about uh, their um, development in terms of uh, the writing over the course of the semester. And then finally, um, we have a bilingual redesign project that uh, Yurun and I, along with uh, Dr. Christine Tardy, developed this summer, and he's going to be talking about that more in the next slide. Thank you, Shelley. So the bilingual project was developed for English 108, um, which is a first year writing course um, aimed at multilingual students who use English as an additional language. And in this assignment, students worked with literature reviews that they had written um, on a topic related to the course theme of internationalization of higher education. And the project required them to take information from their literature review and present it to a non-academic audience. Um, they could choose to make an infographic, a blog post, or an open letter uh, for this purpose. And since this is a bilingual project, students were asked to make two versions. Um, one in English and one in their first language or another language that they felt comfortable working with. And the rationale behind the project um, included um, reflection on shifts in audience and purpose as students took a text and adapted that for 
uh, different audiences. And also we hope that students will become aware of possible uh, genre differences between uh, English and the other language that they work with. Now, one of the students who completed this project, Ahmed, uh, had written a literature review in which he looked at the reasons uh, students from Arabic countries have for studying in the US, um, as well as challenges that they might encounter during their stay. And for the bilingual redesign project, Ahmed chose to create infographics, uh, which is of course a multimodal genre, um, to capture some of the overall trends that he found for non-academic audiences. And to help students reflect on shifts in audience and purpose, students were asked to identify specific audiences for the different language versions of the project. Um, so Ahmed decided that the English language infographic would be aimed at international student advisors in the US, um, whereas his Arabic language infographic specifically targeted high school graduates and their parents in Arab countries. Two things that stand out in Ahmed's project as an example of a multimodal text. Um, first, we see actually a very limited amount of text here. And second, um, we see the, the unique interplay between image and text that I think is characteristic of infographics and also of other multimodal genres. Um, so things that stand out here, and we'll look at um, Ahmed's project in the next slide. Um, visual layout, um, the use of pie charts, and also the use of icons. Here you see the final version of Ahmed's uh, bilingual design project. And I've included both uh, versions here, uh, but I'll focus on the English language version. Um, so when it comes to text, uh, we have a short title at the top, um, Arab students in the US, followed by a question um, to engage the reader. Uh, we also see subheadings and short one sentence explanations. Um, when it comes to visual elements, uh, we see pie charts at the bottom um, used to show percentages here. Um, and visual elements that I mentioned uh, as well, uh, icons that seem to guide the reader and um, identify the main themes here. Um, now, of course, the Arabic language version also includes the Arabic script, um, which is another element of interest here. Of course, assignments will differ. This is just an example of a multimodal project submitted in a first year writing course um, that hopefully gives you a sense of the kind of multimodal elements that um, one might come across in um, Crow. In the next slide, Shelley will talk about the ways in which these multimodal elements can be documented in Crow. So obviously the process of converting the multimodal assignments into text files is more complicated. We do currently um, manually convert those files. And so this is the process that we've gone through um, so far, and we're hoping to get some ideas from you on um, where to take this forward. But this is what we're doing right now. Um, again, manual conversion, and then um, using Notepad++ because of the encoding in, in that program is what we want for our computational, um, our further computational steps. Uh, we copy all the text. We then um, add images and we try to include some descriptors um, as to what those images are. Kind of like what you would do with captioning. Um, uh, for um, students with disabilities. So this is an example of that um, with emojis. And for emojis, there's actually been uh, work already done to indicate what the emoji is and how they're going to be described. And so we're using this um, descriptions 
that have already been developed for Unicode. Uh, for other images, we don't have as, as um, clear a set, so we're making those up as we're going along. Um, and then there's other um, types of coding that we'll put in depending on what um, the other multimodal elements might be, links to external sources, tables, um, and video, for example, uh, are things that have come up in our data. And we've also seen um, things that students are embedding, embedding in. That these are texts uh, that they have created previously, let's say, in the course. This is um, related to the portfolio assignment, so things like student artifact. Uh, we have that, and, and often they have a link to that uh, within, say, their PowerPoint slide that they're um, providing as their portfolio. And so there's other uh, details for, for non-English uh, right now, uh, most of the work that we've done has been very minimal use of other languages, and so we've just um, indicated that those languages were used, but this is something that we're going to need to work out for uh, an assignment like this, this multilingual redesign. Coming back to our previous example of the infographic, and this is just the English version, uh, just to show you what this might look like, we have the infographic, the original on the left-hand side, and then we have the text version on the right-hand side. So you can see that there are um, places where the image images are included in angle brackets, and there's a little descriptor like books or money, or certificate. Um, pie charts are also included as images in there. So this is the way that the text would get flattened um, into um, the TXT format. And then here's another example with uh, a series of tweets that this was the um, register um, rewrite that I talked about earlier um, in the presentation. And so here you can see where the emojis are used and, and how those are included in the um, text file. So a little bit more detail here. And also uh, these are much more standardized. So that's nice. So finally, next steps and ideas, and we're hoping for your ideas as well. Um, we would like to connect the text versions and the originals in our online interface because you can see you lose a lot with the TXT format, but of course it's also searchable, um, so that's an advantage of that format. Automating the processes, uh, we would like to work on that because this is very time consuming and if you have a lot of these, uh, it's just a lot of human labor. Um, and then finally, thinking about um, the bilingual redesign and how we might be able to work with that. Of course, we could um, work with uh, the Arabic text in the, in the case of the example here, but how we're going to uh, flatten that into text and also how we're going to link these um, within some kind of online interface are all questions that we have yet to work out. So looking forward to your ideas um, and questions. <laughs>